my phone overheated. So, part two. These should be in sequence. Now, kind of a go, um, <clears throat> as far as your question on what would Alex and Adam say if I got them on camera, well, I don't know. Um, I know all of what Alex has told me, and there's things that his sister has told him that he's told me. And it's not bombshell shit. It's the same crap you hear everywhere else. But, I can't put words in their mouth. <clears throat> and just because he said it's okay that I mentioned his name doesn't mean he wants to talk about it. Now, Adam, on the other hand, fellow Louisianian, uh, boat captain, awesome individual, hell of a guy, total asshole on staff, though, hated to work with him, hated the guy, hated his guts, sometimes, sometimes, not all the time, <clears throat> But Adam was a very upstat individual. Um, and a cacon most of the time. A cacon is somebody who's untouchable. And the reason he was untouchable, and, you know, I'll, I'll let him speak for himself uh, in due time because. I am going to contact Adam um, before he went off to Brazil to work I drove down and saw him <laughs> I was only able to stay for 20-30 minutes but it was worth the trip um, he's back in Louisiana now so um, and, and I I owe him a song because, um, well, I just do. Um, Adam has no fear. Okay, it's it's similar to to uh, my situation. All right, I don't care. I'm not afraid of Scientology. I'm not afraid of the OSA. I'm not afraid of ex-Scientologists trying to hack my accounts. Good luck. Really, good luck. Um, I'm just not, I don't care anymore. I did live in fear for quite a while. That is how that is why most people don't talk about it. And this whole Melrose thing that happened that no one is talking about, uh, I feel very much alone. I do feel like, uh, like nothing I say can actually be verified. So, um, that's a shitty feeling. Um, but I'm not going to make anyone, I'm not going to try to coerce anyone into speaking. Um, I've had people tell me, well, why don't you just go on and move on with your life? And I have. But here's the thing. Just because I've moved on doesn't mean I have forgotten. Just because I have forgiven doesn't mean I have forgotten. And the issue that I have is that this still happens to other people. Now, I'm not saying people who aren't talking about what happened to them are wrong or in some way immoral 
for not having feelings about people who they don't know who are experiencing similar fates that we did um, those people will learn on their own in their own time and I mean that's how it happened with us so um, I don't have any uh, I don't hold any judgment over people for not speaking out. Um, but for me personally, uh, because I have always had an interest in uh, the, the inner workings of the mind, the brain, how does the brain work? How do people do the things they do? Why do people do the things they do? This is what this is why I was a psychology major in 1999 and this is why I'm a psychology major today. What makes the people what makes people do these things? Uh, how can people be cr so cruel? You know, after the Nuremberg trials there was a lot of uh, research done uh, about how someone could be so cruel because in the Nuremberg trials, the doctors, the, the scientists, people experimenting on other human beings in such a cruel and horrible way, a lot of them answered similarly, we did it because it was our job. And so, the the Ash conformity experiments, the uh, experiments on authority and obedience to it, uh, ex ex explained a lot of that type of behavior. But when I look at Scientology, that's what I see. I see Nazis. I see an organization that has modified modified this this agenda that that was uh, similar to the Nazis. I mean, the Ubermensch is an OT. You know, I mean, Homo Novus, New Man. This is this is similar to the Ubermensch. Uh, luckily, Scientology hasn't taken society by the roots like uh, it, like the Nazis did in Germany in the 1930s. But that doesn't change the fact that it exists. And just because they're not their own sovereign country, sovereign nation, uh, and and have a, a thriving ideology of hate and bigotry and control and uh, pseudoscience doesn't mean that they're any less evil. And having been part of something that evil knowing the evil that exists within it uh, still is there and hurting people personally I can't not say anything that's me. So, I appreciate everyone who watches the videos big time. Because 
uh, it verifies and, and um, it lets me know that what I think about Scientology and the fact that I even talk about it still it doesn't make me crazy uh, it doesn't make me stuck in the past because I don't feel stuck in the past uh, it's just I can't I just can't fathom that this organization still gets a pass, you know. And I also, there's only a limited amount of of benefit in my in my opinion <clears throat> to simply telling your story. I've told my story. Okay, it's not dissimilar from any many others in fact my story is is really nothing in comparison to some others that have lived it that lived it for 30 years plus and that still live it so once you get that out of the way like what why am I still talking about it okay well um because it's important to me that uh, people see. Not hear. You see with your eyes, you hear with your ears. And a picture is worth a thousand words. The Louis Theroux Scientology movie was the closest thing I saw to being on staff only in the small portion of the film <clears throat> where they're doing TRs. That's it. Um, and it's hard for me to describe it in words. You have to see it. You have to see the interaction. See, the, see how socially different it is. It's so different. Being on staff, interacting with int terminals, interacting with executives, interacting with each other. Uh, there is a distance that's created between every single person, yet everyone is together. No one really thinks on their own. It's a group thought process. Um, when you make originations, and this is, this is pretty much a derogatory term, an origination, which is a thought of your own. <clears throat> that origination will be acknowledged in some form or another. Hopefully, if you're lucky, it's not acknowledged with ethics handlings. Um... Because those get, can get really complicated. And what ends up happening when you do originate and you do end up in a complicated ethics handling is that you're coerced into admitting things that you either did or imagined that you did in, in, a, in this life or past lives. And if you could just imagine the list of horrible things a human being could do to another human being in this life or in past lives, then it's easy to see that when you have an original thought, an origination, the, the technique used in Scientology is to blackmail you to get you to stop having original thoughts so without seeing it and just hearing it 
you know, and just hearing the stories. Oh, that's so messed up. I can't believe that happened. They separated their daughter from their mother. They separated their grandmother from the grandchildren. Yeah. What is this, some kind of freak show? I mean, do we really care? Or do we just want to hear the fucked up story? kind of like watching, you know, another cult documentary, like on Jamestown or um, the uh, Moonies or something. It's like, it's a novelty. And that's disgraceful to me. Uh, it should be disgraceful to anyone who ever worked for a church. In my opinion, it should be disgraceful because, uh, I mean, you should feel disgraced because, um, you were part of it. And if you see someone else talking about it as if it was some sort of a freak show novelty and people on YouTube and people on television uh, and in the news and in the press talking about, look at how crazy, what, look at what this crazy shit Scientologists believe and what they do. I'm all for it, okay? Don't misunderstand. I want to make it very, very clear. I'm all for it. Publish as much as you can on how crazy Scientology is. But, understand that it is not just some novelty. You know, it's not, this is happening to people every day. There are people suffering right now. There's people in ethics right now. There's people who are sitting there doing TR0 all night long, haven't slept, because they didn't meet a quota or some shit, because they talked to a girl, because they wanted a relationship, because they walked off pack base for five minutes and, and their senior didn't know where they were. I want to know what happened with Jason Lee. He's in Denton, Texas right now. That's four hours away. Why did he leave? He was at the Melrose Mission opening. Hey, Jason. Celebrities live in a bubble when they're in Scientology. Ethics don't apply to them the same way. I don't care what they say. Oh, yeah, I've been in ethics. Yeah, okay, sure you have, buddy. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you've been in ethics. You've had to write your OWs. You've, read, you've done conditions. They've got dirt on you for sure. But... You also had, you also were able to have some semblance of a life because you were providing money to the organization. You were <clears throat> contributing far and above, above and beyond what me, a lowly staff member, could could do. So you got what you call lib, what we call libs. You get your libs. You know, you get to go hang out with your friends. You get to make art and music. Beck, I mean, I shook your hand, bro. And you get to go out and make all this amazing music and get your auditing and talk. And it's just, it's essentially just therapy for you. Tom, same thing. You get to do whatever you want. You get free reign, man. But there are people suffering.
I have bad days. Um, I've had real bad days. I mean, I had, you know, on, on staff, I had the worst day of my life, and it almost ended. Since then, I've had other bad days. But I have learned that the emotion that you feel when, the, when these things happen, they tend not to last as long as the human mind thinks. That makes sense. <clears throat> In other words, when you feel depressed and you feel suicidal, let's say, <clears throat> it feels like that pain and that suffering will just never go away. And you gotta, like, end it. It's almost like it's a scab you want to just rip off, blow your head off, hang yourself. <clears throat> uh, it took a lot of therapy for me to understand that those feelings are very temporary very temporary and and it took a lot of reading uh of the Tao and some other literature the uh buddha sutras and and um other great writings um the uh, art of war great book um I try to live my life by those principles. So for those of you who, who consider me a non-believer or whatever, I, I, I'm not. I was raised Catholic, uh, so I, you know, had to, I mean, I, here, you want to see if this insignia means anything to you, okay? To me, this is just, this is just, an insignia. It's just this is this is so that people don't hassle me <laughs> about my beliefs because my beliefs aren't conventional. They they never really have been. <clears throat> I don't know what happens when we die, and anyone who tells you that they do may have had a, an experience of their own. I mean, I've I've left my body before. I've been, and, and perhaps that's a, just a hallucination of consciousness. I don't know. Um, but in studying uh, the Buddha Sutras, and studying Buddha, and studying uh, Lao Tzu, and um, <clears throat> Sun Tzu, and um, other yogic well, other yogis, uh, other philosophers, Alan Watts, uh, Wayne Dyer, uh, Eckhart Tolle, you know, just uh, <clears throat> great thinkers. Um, I no longer look at the, the world the same. So when I feel these reprehensible emotions... I know that they are temporary, but I do feel them. And luckily, I have some skill and some, uh, what I believe to be genetic uh, um, a genetic disposition to be able to play music. It's just something that's come naturally to me in my life. Uh, it was confirmed when I met my brother. Like I, The human genome hadn't been fully decoded, but bef you know, before the human genome was decoded, I met my brother, and that was all the proof that I needed that genes played a factor and had a huge role in uh, development of, of the mind and the body um, most of my biological family are musically inclined so luckily I have a, a way to sublimate which is to deal with emotions in a positive way there are many ways you can deal with emotions you can displace them 
you can um, oh my psych teacher would not be happy with me right now but I get a pass because it's four in the morning and uh, and and I and I woke up from a dream and I just decided to go take a drive so and I'm you know this is a little stream of consciousness kind of thing happening but you can do things with your emotions you can, and displacement is a very unhealthy way to deal with it you know you get mad at something, you're upset about something, you kick the dog, or you cut yourself, or, you know, you, you harm yourself, or you harm other people. Uh, I had some pretty negative emotions last night, and I just went and played my piano. And I wrote a, a, a pretty emo song. It's just not... You know, uh, it's not a very happy song, but I was able to work through those emotions with it. And that's a lot healthier than some of the other alternatives. So, people who are concerned about my mental health uh, really need not be... Um, there's a time for everything. You can't be happy all of the time. Uh, it's just not the way of the world. I mean, things happen. We're human beings. We have feelings. Sometimes our feelings are not good. And to try to always feel happy is a good goal, uh, but whenever you find yourself in a predicament or in a position emotionally where you don't feel comfortable, um, there needs to be a way to sublimate and and to get those emotions, work through those emotions, and experience them without harming anyone including yourself and that's what I learned in therapy and as far as my beliefs go I think that Jesus was great I think that Buddha was great I think that Lao Tzu was great I think that Alan Watts was great I think that uh, Lao uh, Sun Tzu was great there are many many great people in our human history who have given us immense insight into the nature of, of who we are. L. Ron Hubbard was not one of them. I, I did a stand-up comedy the other day and I talked about Scientology and uh, afterwards the guy uh, who was doing the introductions, you know, the, the hype guy. Uh, he was like, oh yeah, a little, little bit of uh, wisdom from my, ho my homie, L. Ron Hobo. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Um, so, yeah, I think I've made it clear what I want to do. Um, And I completely understand anyone who may be watching under some alias account uh, that uh, doesn't believe me or doesn't think that what I'm saying happened or that I'm just looking for attention or that I've got issues outstanding that I need therapy for. But you can think what you want. Um... My goal is to show, so that people can see, what it's like. Maybe I'll be done after that. Maybe that'll satisfy me. Because at this point, that's what I've been looking for. I want to see someone show what it's like. 
<clears throat> I don't want to hear the stories. That's why I don't watch the Leah Remini show. Maybe I should. Maybe there are reenactments. But if they aren't legit, if they aren't authentic, it would just piss me off. But I am tired of hearing the stories. I'm tired of hearing the stories. The stories don't... Uh, don't get me wrong. I have empathy and sympathy for everyone who's been on staff and everyone who's been, a, you know, a victim of Scientology. Um, and I am interested in what happened to them insofar as that they need to get it off their chest. They need to talk about it. Uh... But what I'm not interested in is this proliferation of Scientology stories for the sake of novelty, and wow, what a fucked up cult that is. Um, not interested in that. Not interested in holding my content back and holding it back and just releasing it in tiny little morsels and trying to get views and trying to get popular based on the fact that I was a Scientologist. I could give two fucks about that, okay? I want people to see a picture is worth a thousand words. What would an entire video of seeing what it's like being on staff show people what kind of response would that elicit I'm not a Hollywood producer I don't have thousands of dollars to spend on a project like this so I'm gonna do it the best that I can but I will say that the best that I can is not bad. I've done four records since I moved here. Audio is half of what makes a, a good movie. Did you know that? You could have a great movie, a great script, and, and great acting, but if the audio isn't there, no one's going to really connect to it. Music and audio and high, you know, being able to hear what's happening, the nuance is crucial. I'm not a cinematographer, I'm not a videographer. I'll be shooting this shit on my phone. 